So we had strong winds and rain last night and I've just noticed down here there's a little bumblebee which is not doing so well. It is still alive so we're going to see if we can revive it. So what I've got is a bit of honey mixed with water, boiled water but not hot and I've got a container that's full of warm water and we're going to put the bee on top of that and hopefully the warmth will help it to revive. Now I need to pick it up really carefully. I'm not going to use my hands for this because my thick fingers will probably just damage it. So I'm going to get a leaf or something and just handle it on top of this container. So the warmth appears to be helping. Let's just see if I can encourage it to take a little bit of this sugar water, well honey water. There's no danger of the bee getting hurt by the hot water this way, but hopefully it'll give it enough warmth to get its body going again. Right, I'm going to have to put the camera down while I just try and feed this bee. Okay, I've transferred it off the leaf and onto the lid directly so it gets a little bit more warmth. And it has found the honey water right there. Yeah, it's feeding, it's feeding. Yeah, so it's feeding from the honey water. Look at that. Excellent. It's drinking the honey water. Awesome. Okay, struggling a little bit because the poor thing's very weak. But look, you can see with its proboscis, it's sucking up that honey water. You can see its little tongue coming in and out. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And hopefully this will give it the energy it needs to recover and just find its way home. So what I'm going to do now is move this container into a very sheltered spot so it's out of the wind and out of the cold. And let this bee just recover a little bit and hopefully it will fly away home. So I've put the pot in a slightly more sheltered position now. And giving it another drop of honey water. And look at that, that's one hungry bee. And I think it's lying flat like this because it's absorbing some warmth from underneath there, from the warm water underneath in that container. Just really want to see it come back to life and fly off now. Definitely coming back to life now. So I'm just going to warm it on my hand. And hopefully it'll be on its way in a moment. The sun's just coming out a little bit, that's going to help. It's just grooming itself now. Come on, little fella. It's tickling me. <laughs> oh, that tickles. Come on, guy, fly off. Come on, mate. Oops. There we go. And away. Now it's gone down to a. It's gone down to the patio there but it's moving around and it's quite active now. I can see it moving around. I'm gonna leave it there 
now it's in a sunny spot on the warm stone. I don't think there's any more I can do to help now. That bee is looking a lot more active and lively and it can sit here and sun itself on the patio. Job done, I think. Hopefully it'll fully recover and find its way home now. So, five minutes later the sun came out and the bee warmed up and a few minutes later I went down there and the bee flew away. Didn't capture that on video. But, so what was the point of all of that? Does it really make a difference to save just one bee? Well, let's put some bee roll on and we'll talk about it. So yes, saving one bee is not going to save the world. It likely won't make any measurable environmental difference at all. In fact, what I did today for this bee was mostly about me. But let me explain. Sure, it made me feel good to be trying to help nature, but that needn't be a completely selfish and pointless thing. This is the first time in my life I've ever actually held a living bee in my hand, and it's probably the longest time I've ever spent looking at one single insect. I can only hope that the bee found its way home to raise the next generation of its species, but what I know for sure is that this experience has given me a newfound appreciation for these important insects. So yes, this was about me just as much as it was about the bee, but it was about allowing nature to change my heart just a little bit. Bees are incredibly vital, not only to natural ecosystems, but also to our own survival and prosperity. Many of our crops are dependent on pollination by bees. They're not just nice things to have about the place, we actually need bees. So what can we do to help? Well, here are five simple things that all of us can do to help the bees. Number one, plant a bee-friendly garden. The best plants are those which produce lots of small flowers over an extended period, but nearly any flowering garden plant will help. There's a link in the video description to some resources listing bee-friendly plants. If you don't have a garden of your own, and you don't even have space for a pot on a patio or a window box, how about buying some bee-friendly seeds or plants for someone you know who does have the space to grow them? Number two, let the weeds grow a bit, especially if you have a lawn. Lawn weeds such as clover, buttercup and daisies can be a really valuable source of nectar for bees and they can enhance rather than spoil a lawn. If you think this is nicer to look at than this, I think there might be something wrong with you. Number three, reduce your personal use of insecticides. Get a fly swatter or one of those catch and release doohickeys instead of a can of fly spray. In your garden, try companion planting or other non-chemical controls to deter or reduce pests. Number four, support your local apiarist. Buy local honey and beeswax products. Get them direct from the beekeeper if you can. And number five, probably the easiest of all, sponsor a project like this one, the Karma Honey Project. This is a charity in Puerto Rico that's working to promote beekeeping, bee-friendly planting and research and education to try to save our planet's bee populations. I'm donating the first month's revenue from this video to the Karma Honey Project, so thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.